Can we say that Matt is German and probably gay? <laughs> you can say whatever you like. He's going to disagree with it anyway. <laughs> okay, but I mean, you don't disagree, right? <laughs> I, w I wouldn't completely disagree with that. <laughs> Work for it, Europe. Let's go. All right, guys. We got uh, Matt coming home from France. He's driving home. And we got Albert driving to france i don't know what those guys are doing there i guess they got really good french fries over there or something but both of them are not available at the moment so we got mr ben Camon, hey ho and mershad from sheer knives Hello. i think the show is going to be a little bit different but uh we'll start off with what everybody's doing in the workshop some new projects or something i saw today on uh instagram Camon made a little belt splitter you want to talk about that a little bit or why you're doing it or uh yeah can you I not can. get i mean <laughs> yeah if it's interesting to you totally um yeah for me it is uh i ordered for my uh hook grinds for my s hook grinds i ordered a narrow wheel from oliver tobin so it's it's uh 20 millimeters width and for mm -hmm. that i needed to split some belts because i mean i could order them with uh vsm but the thing is they have a rather big minimum order quantity and usually i order end of the year and then i thought i'll just make myself a belt splitter for that since i don't use those belts very heavily anyways because for that s for those s hooks it doesn't take too much and so yeah the belt splitter was built because i wasn't able to find one to buy and yeah so you split them in in half or to like a one inch yeah not to 20 millimeters uh one one uh, 10 10 millimeters are left or one centimeter mm -hmm. um yeah. and I'll, I'll keep those small belts as well because maybe i have an application down the line for them um mm -hmm. they don't take up a lot of space and uh we will see but it's super nice, the belt splitter. I mean, it's it's just a little chick with a, s a slot. You put um, one of those uh, uh, carpet cutting blades into, one of those stain stainless blades. Um, mm -hmm. It has a guidance left and right for 50 millimeter. Turns out you only need one guidance on the one side. Let's say you want to cut a 20 millimeter belt. Then you need one guidance at 20 millimeters from the blade. And that's sufficient. You don't need two um guiding yeah. mm, how do you say guiding uh limiters or yeah um mm -hmm. and you can cut i i tried it on uh those scotch bite belts they go super easy you can cut those as well uh so i'm very happy the wear on the blade is rather high especially if you're cutting a 40 grit belt but yeah. then again i mean one blade costs like probably 30 cents um just exchange it and go on and you can get blades that have like sections to snap off to keep yeah again, shop, it, right? it, so, exactly yeah. i have those yeah uh yeah. Yeah, yeah so you're cutting the 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 belts in in half for a fuller wheel so for people that were making uh what would you a fuller would be a hunting knife or on a sword or something where you have the little groove cut in it, the blood groove <laughs> yeah it's it's not a full it's still um surface contact wheel but just a narrow one but i thought okay. about the fuller wheel because um it, it it always interested me for my bread knives right now i'm yeah. um grinding those tooth in um with the belt running parallel to the spine but with a fuller wheel you could go perpendicular to the mm -hmm. spine and i think that would make for uh yeah for a more controlled process because right now the uh little radius wheel i'm using always uh pulls you in one direction in the direction the belt is turning obviously but the fuller wheel yeah. uh, there would just be uh, more control essentially yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah no i see what you mean so you so you, until now you've been using the small wheel attachment that's what you mean, right? Yeah, to yeah, make exactly. the grooves Small. for yeah. the bread knife. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely the fuller wheel would be much easier. Yeah, maybe I'll get it. Because you're one. always going in one direction. But then 
with the fuller wheel I'd also need to get J flag spells and I don't have any and then we are with the main minimum qu order quantity and I don't do so many bread knives so that's a problem on its own so I'm, I don't know if I'll get into that <laughs> I always wanted to try one I'm scared though I have to like get some cheap Ikea knives or something and try out try that out for the for the bread knife yeah I just I'm like super anal and I know that I wouldn't get them even enough to make me happy. I would just throw everything away. <laughs> um, uh, like the distance between, I don't know. There's got to be some way to figure that out, like some kind of jig. Or, I mean, even marking them, like you said, the belt was going to pull it to one side a little bit, yeah. unless you use the full wheel. Yeah. And that would drive me nuts. And that's why I don't finish knives. Like it takes, I do like 10, 15 knives a year because I, if there's something like tiny little thing that I see wrong, <laughs> it won't leave, it won't leave my shop. <laughs> And you can't make money that way, so I don't sell knives. <laughs> Not that many. <laughs> uh, is that the right mindset to get self-employed? <laughs> yeah, not for knives. That's why I don't sell knives. Yeah, well, not not many. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun, and then it's not fun anymore when shit like that happens. Oh, yeah, making knives. Huh? <laughs> Keith, how long did you make the charity knife? That one was clean as fuck. Oh man, I knew. I would say about a year. Ah, stop it! Really? <laughs> no, really. I knew. I knew way ahead of time. Yeah, but I don't. I don't like sit on it and work on it every day. Like, if yeah. if something's not going right, I put it down, and then I might come back to it like three or four weeks later. Okay. So, Finally, I found someone who's lower than me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. About that smart putting it down because if you if you you know push through, that's when the mistakes happen. Yeah, yeah. I even con I even contacted you, Ben. Uh, I don't remember what the problem was. It was something I was doing, and I'm like, I was getting frustrated, and that, and it was getting close to the deadline. And contacted you about about the grind, or so, I don't remember what it yeah, was. Yeah, exactly. something about grind, or yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't know either, but I know I've saw I, I've seen pictures up front. No, I I, I need to learn um, more, like because I don't cook a whole lot, or next to nothing so i only get the feedback from like my, my wife and people that i've given knives away to before so the geometry i think is a is a is questionable and it's probably that way for a lot of people because i mean even jeff Feta had it on his last couple of podcasts that most of the people who make the kitchen knives don't know how to cook and if you don't know how to cook what are you making a kitchen knife for so i always question myself on that and i think geometry i'd love to have a class where we could go to a knife maker like to Nahangla or something and he would like discuss the reason like why is the S grind so good and or why is uh, this grind better than the other for this instance and for what they're used for and stuff. I think that's very interesting and nobody really offers that kind of a class. I think that's something as as with there's no more knife makers um, that that's probably something that a lot of people could use or would be interested in instead of just pumping out knives that look good on in a picture but they cut like shit yeah i see i yeah. mean where i would see the problem is i think in theory it's relatively easy to understand why an s grind works over a full flat grind for example but i think what would be the, what the problem would be in a course is to translate um the theory into good results back in the shop because you know we are talking about measurement differences in like 0 0.3 millimeters that make a big difference on a carrot for mm -hmm. example um in thickness at a certain point so i'm thinking mm -hmm. you you can understand even the theory but i think the bigger problem is executing it to be honest yeah. but then you would have a couple of knives for example on the table like just grind something out quick that you know is wrong like a completely full flat grind on a kitchen knife and then one with ass grind and one with a hook grind and one with uh yeah you know what i mean so the people could feel it cut some shit and even then though it changes like the the width of the knife will change that grind geometry completely but maybe if you have a little bit of the basic understanding um it would help you to produce a better cutting knife and mayor shot it does a lot of hook grinds and at least on the the one that he gave away for the charity knife was like a crazy hook grind that i probably could never make <laughs> but i'm sure that he tried it out beforehand and it's probably you i mean mayor shot you try out all of your knives before you 
That's you put them off, right? my, 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 my thing is I come from cooking. I'm not a professional chef, but I cook a lot. And then I started making knives. So that's one positive aspect. And yeah, the grinds, I always test them. I would never let something go out if it's not working like I'm imagining it. But yeah, the double hook worked good. It was an idea. I tried it and it worked. Was it the asymmetric double hook, right? It was slightly yeah, set yeah. off. Yeah. It, it looked it looked um, very exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, on the, the... There is a funny story behind it. The winner was a lefty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we talked with uh, Oli, Öl, nice. We talked about it and we was like, hey, should I make a um, symmetrical knife and all that stuff? And I was like, mm, fuck it. Let's, uh, I will do this because how high is the chance that the winner is a lefty? <laughs> 10%. And da da, the winner was a lefty. But we managed to work that one out. He will get a new knife from me for a lefter, mm -hmm. lefty. And the, um, the deeper hook is about eight millimeters uh, from the cutting edge. And mm -hmm. the left one is about, I think, 20 millimeters. And yeah, it worked. It was just trying. Try and error, like always, like I always do. And have you since sold that knife that was for the charity? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sold it, I think, in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. I was Perfect. lucky on that one. Someone yeah. snapped it out of, I posted a story and it was gone. So I'm happy with that one. And he was too. Worked good. Perfect, yeah. Um, I was curious, how, how um, do you decide on your designs i mean i'm i'm specifically asking because your handle shapes and 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 uh, blade profiles and all that they are very you know edgy and pronounced yeah. so i'm i'm thinking if there is a special philosophy behind that or if if what what is the how, how do you make those de decisions the thing is the thing is uh, uh, when you when you start you are copying and not not in my case, I did not copy 100%, but I had people that I looked up to and I wanted to try this stuff and that stuff. And in the time you try to find your own handwriting, I would call it. And um, I just tried new things and improved on that. The, the handles, for example, they look, like you said, edgy. But the funny thing is on the exhibition, knife exhibition, for example, people can can hold them and try them. And the reaction was always the same. Hmm, looks edgy. I don't know if it's feel if it feels comfortable and all that stuff. And I told them, hey, listen, I don't do that. I don't do them just for the looks. They work. The pin they are designed for the pinch grip and all that stuff. Try it. And they took it in their head, and it was immediately like, whoa, fuck, that's feeling amazing. It's just wrapping around the hand. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I tried at home. I tried it. I know how to hold a knife. I know how I personally work with a knife. I have friends, there are uh, chefs in a Michelin restaurant and all that stuff, and they tried all that stuff. And uh, I get my feedback from them. So, and then there is a, yeah, developing new designs and, and all, that, all that stuff. Nice. I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to to say they were uncomfortable. What I meant with edgy yeah, was no, no. more the, um, not the not the angles that are touched by the hand, but for exp uh, for example, the bottom of your handles uh, has a steep yeah. angle. The, edgy in the sense of, you know, philosophically speaking, very pronounced, very strong <laughs> and and dominant. You know, that, that's that, just just looks. That's looks. Yeah. Um, yeah. There there is no big reason behind it um most of the parts that you see they have a reason but but stuff like the the butt i call it um yeah that's just design and uh, my background before studying and all that stuff was uh graphics and design and pictures and video and all that stuff so i have a slightly feeling for for flow and curves and all that stuff and if you look at the pieces that i show most of the time they have a complete look i would call them they have a flow flowing from the blade into the handle and all that stuff mm -hmm. that's yeah. what i like to show with my work 
Yeah, you know, Ben, you probably put just as much work. I think out of all the Austrian and German knife makers, the two of you are probably the people who spend the most time on the handle work. <laughs> I mean, you, you have a very, you can tell your knife right away from the handle. I mean, you could just see a section of it and you know that it's Ben's on the same. I think the same thing with Meerschaft. I mean, I mean, with my, with my, uh, I would, most of the people call them Western style, the curved ones, yes. Yeah. And I have my WA, that's not a regular WA style. But I managed to work something out for me that Keith, you know what I'm talking about. When you see them, you know, okay, yeah. that's that's from, from me. And yeah. uh, I try to, to find something that I can work on and finish it rather quick than the Western styles that I do because they take lots and lots and lots of time to finish. Mm. And that's the thing that I switch up to. Yeah, I'm just looking at them. Um... I mean, you have the, the bottom groove in there. Do you do you make that with the with the small radius wheel as well after the handle is mounted on the on the knife? Uh, no, my 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 handles are ninety five percent bolted on, so I can always take them off. Uh, I work on them uh, without the blade on it, and Smart. I use <laughs> I, yeah, I use. Uh, that's the main reason. One of the main reasons is I can align them in the same position every time when I take them off and take them on always the same position so I can look uh, and and um, for example look from the back to the spine of the blade and I can see if it's straight or not if it's twisted anything like that and I can take it off and work on the handle um, and then the radius is uh, 50 uh, millimeter yeah. that I work on and then it's all hand sanding it's a nightmare <laughs> to con to yeah, connect keep all, all those, those facets lined up and yeah, symmetrical. Yeah, that's just. Yeah, I mean, that, I think I yeah, think so. your handle is not possible to make with it on the knife, right? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. If you if you look at my profile, the, the second one, it's a full tang blade, and it's it's just um, I do hidden pins on the full tangs, and I try to to work as much as it gets on on the blade, but sometimes I take the scales off. And I put them together. I have smaller pins, and it's looking like a smaller handle without the blade. And then I work on it from every angle. Mm -hmm. That's my way that I found for myself. I just switch the uh, pins, the alignment pins, to smaller pins so I can put them together. And then I have the handle without any blade on it, and then I can work on it. But it would not be possible with the blade on it would be hard but then then mm. you have to plot the um, full tang or align the full tang with the scales at the end or yeah yeah yeah, well, yeah when okay. I'm, I, I work i work first on the facets and yeah. all the all the all the uh, all that stuff yeah. and in the end i do the contours okay, with, okay. With, so and the the good thing is i can take them off and take them on take off and on and all i can work from there step by step it's that's why i don't like full thing but in in the end i always like them from the looks but i hate working on them yeah i'm with you i mean the 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 reason why i collaborated with martin huber on my full tank knives was uh because he makes them good and <laughs> i couldn't make them at all without grinding into the plate constantly and yeah. i'm not joking so um because i wouldn't i mean i would make it uh, i would say classical way i would probably for out of lack of knowledge i would glue the scales to the knife and then grind the handle i mean i think most knife makers who make full tank knives make it that way and yeah. when yeah. i do that i would constantly grind into the blade i'm sure um so yeah it's a smart approach to have them have them take down until the very end, um, shape them mm -hmm. as much as possible. Um, but it's on me because I like to make things harder for myself. Sometimes I don't <laughs> think about the way or how much time it takes. I just want it to look that way, yeah. whatever it takes. And then, yeah, that's why I take so much time to finish stuff. Even if it means finishing 20 knives right before the knife show, right? Ah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nightmares. Yeah, I mean, it's nightmares coming that's up. That's what it takes. You got to stick with your with your own style. You yeah. finished 20 knives before the knife show? Uh, no, I'm it, exaggerating. It, okay. it, it, it was, uh, I think, 16, 18 knives. 
Fuck. And when, when you compare when, when when you compare that to my regular output, yeah, that's just insane. I how had... many how many oh, how much overtime did you make <laughs> in the shop? <laughs> Well, it was, I had one week of vacation, one week before the knife exhibition, and I think two weeks before that, so three weeks. Um, the, the two weeks before the exhibition, I had, I worked till two o'clock, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and then in the workshop till night, so 9, 10 p.m., and that each day. And after that, I, yeah, it was one complete week. An exhibition, so it was lots of time. But uh, that's when people are dumb and do stuff in the in the latest possible time. That's me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, nice. But Ben, you're gonna see that soon because I he heard from a little birdie that you're gonna join your second knife show from uh, Knife Show Austria. So, uh... is that true or? I learned recently <laughs> that the organizer is an is is yeah. a dickhead yeah and, of course yeah. And, and and a little gay um <laughs> so i will probably <laughs> not show up <laughs> ah okay no so I'm... i can have you a spot but... <laughs> <laughs> probably i get the spot next to the toilet so <laughs> martin <laughs> will be so kind <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll be I'll uh, be attending my second knife show, and I nice. I dread it already. <laughs> nice. Uh, the first okay. time I ever met Kamon, uh, where where were we in Germany? At what was the yeah, show? Yeah, Bavaria in Orching. Uh, Orching. Orching, yeah. Uh, and, and I came to the table, and I I already knew the story about his uh about his handles. Everybody thinks they're interchangeable, and he didn't know who I was. I think at the moment, and I came up to the table and was talking to him. I was like, oh, so so you can change all the handles around to fit on those other knives right and, and you like you looked at me like i was an asshole but you were very polite and explained to me that you don't make knives that way I, and i just said i'm i'm just fucking with you i'm pretty sure i didn't know who you were who you were but i recognized yeah. that you've been standing there and looking at me and you was you've been re very uh, respectful because i was talking to someone i don't know if yeah, it was a customer, customer. friend and mm. you've been just waiting and and after the fact i was asking you why you just didn't interrupt or anything <laughs> you, was, you you were just standing there going around coming back then then going away again i think <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. it was a few times um no because yeah. i was i was just i knew i was just going to be a dick and you had a potential customer and <laughs> i don't want to inter interrupt that i mean that's that's a uh, knife show etiquette <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have known. I was never to to yes. one, so <laughs> you could have interrupted. No problem. <laughs> um, but I don't. I don't actually remember you as a dick. So I don't. I don't think maybe it was my bitch face, <laughs> face coming through. But I don't think that I thought of you as being a dick for asking that. Maybe I was just stressed because I was a little stressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, all the people touching your knives and then uh, laying them back onto the sires uh, that I don't want to be scratched and oh. the edge touching the little screws of the sires where I was thinking oh that's that's like scratching on a chalkboard that's like mm. <laughs> um, mm. so yeah I was a little a little stressed I get anxiety thinking about that stuff yeah, it's and crazy. You, you, can, you, you can trust me all thing and those people are way more I don't know delicate with knives than on the knife exhibition you, you can't oh. imagine what what they did to stuff on my table this year i was i was forced to put signs in there don't touch without asking please and all that stuff and they still managed yeah. to just take stuff throw it down and it's it's just insane even when the sign was there yeah yeah of course of course they don't care oh well, that really was in solingen care. yes 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 yeah, but Solingen is a is is. I mean, I would I would expect the people to know there. It's not no, the... the 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 people attending are more more. What is it called? Um, not uh, diehard knife enthusiasts. Uh, some of them are for for sure, but uh, most of the people are regular knife users. For example, people that buy uh, Boca or or. Yeah, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just yeah, regular people yeah. working with regular knives. That's not a bad thing. I don't want to 
talk bad. But yeah, they like to see knives and yeah, hey, let's go. Let's see. And for example, the one with the messing uh, integral that I did. Yeah. Please, I think yeah. you know what I mean. This one yeah. was a yeah. very special one and was posted in the middle of my stand and they don't give a fuck. They just took it and it's it's just crazy. I was um, just afraid all the time, but yeah, worked out. I can't imagine that. I mean, I, I just delivered this week uh, a hunting knife that it took me about a year to make, by the way, <laughs> uh, to a customer and, and he handed it over to his wife to look at it. So I had a, a leather sheath. It didn't have like a belt loop in it, just a leather sheath, like a knicker knife, like an Austrian hunting knife. And she held the sheath like uh, straight up with the tip pointing up to the sky, put the knife into the leather sheath oh. and then tried to like four times to belt to... to put the little button on it to close the sheath. And I'm like, that fucking knife is going to fall straight down onto the ground. You own it already. Nah. <laughs> that's, that's way too stressful. I can't imagine being at a show with people like spitting on your knives and touching them with the greasy cheeseburger hands and all that shit. That would drive me out. Uh, that's too much. I'm, <laughs> I'm so fucking happy that I don't have to deal with people on a daily basis. I mean, the online uh. dealing is enough already, but I ship those things out. Uh, people receive them i hope they are happy but at least i don't have to see what they do wrong and yeah uh <laughs> it's crazy um but i i wanted to say about the about the uh, signs of about not touching your your knives i actually was planning to do that in all king yeah. Uh, but I chickened out because I, you know, <laughs> walked around and nobody had those signs. And I kind of thought, you know, yeah. my first show, I don't want to act rude or appear rude or anything. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then I chickened out. But in retrospect, I hope I'm not as much a chicken uh, with Martin show because then the signs are there and, and <laughs> everyone who touches or tries to touch gets the, the stick. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even the touching uh, at itself. It's, it's the asking uh, without asking. On, on the sign, it was, yes. uh, it was written without asking. And my, myself, I just uh, told them, yeah, if you like to. No, you can take it, take this one, take this one. For example, the handles, the shaped handles, if they wanted to. No problem at all. But those 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 people they are running besides that, just putting hands on everything and then uh, leaving. So I was like, well, what's going on? Why are you doing like stuff like this? And yeah, it's what that's, it is. But yeah, that's but, a rude mindset. <laughs> but but it's, that's not chick, like... chicken out. I, I, I got the same thing uh, the night. Before the exhibition, I was lasering those signs with my fiber laser. And my girlfriend asked me, she said, hey, don't, don't you think that's a little bit too much? And the same that, the thoughts that you had, right? And I said, yeah. no, last year, they they completely they don't give a fuck. You know, they did what they wanted to do. So this year, let's keep it real. Let's just, but mm, without any yeah, effect, I would call it. So it is what it is. Yeah, will you will you be attending in uh, the Austrian show? Uh, I wrote the thing. Is it is it uh, official? Who's at, who's putting it out? The yeah, dickhead, it's the official. Dickhead. Yeah, I mean he's 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 gonna post on Friday. So by the time this comes out, everybody okay. will know who the dickhead is. So, so. so I I wrote it with the dickhead and I told him, hey, mm -hmm. my man, put me uh, uh, reserve me a spot. I will fill in the attending stuff you the the i will sign up everything but reserve me a spot so it's just nice. seeing people and come around have a great time it's not uh selling knives for me in the, in the main act it's just seeing people and coming yeah. around all you guys so nice. i will be there uh should we name the dickhead actually i mean i think everyone no i mean do you want to advertise more for him <laughs> you don't want no, to know i would bigger. never advertise for martin huber Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love him. <laughs> no. No, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be great. I think that's awesome. Uh I wish everybody oh that there'll be more shows near near us in Europe. I, I don't want more shows. Wish them all the best. I'm sure it's gonna be great. <laughs> more shows means more knives for me and please don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
I have to worry about next year. It's in May uh, 25, right? Yeah, Mother's Day. Yeah, okay. So he says, uh, bring your mom. She pays half price. Okay, perfect. We will manage that one. So, 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 I mean, we're an hour in already, but speaking of shows, this, this whole, uh, purpose of this show was discuss a little bit more about Meerschad because, uh, me and the guys from the Salzburg Messerschmitt and, uh, Matt from DIY Europe, we were planning a trip to go to America, the blade show. And, uh, I asked Meerschad if he would like to join us and Meerschad said he's not allowed to go to the U S. Yeah. Uh, apparently the u.s has like three countries that they don't allow in for their own political reasons i guess yeah and meshad has a very interesting story hopefully we have enough time to to finish it meshad uh you live in germany but you not you weren't born in german in no, germany right? i was i wasn't i was born in iran persian mm -hmm. and how did you get how did you get to germany yeah that's that's the starting point of the story. Uh, first of all, yeah. let me just tell about the America stuff. Uh, it's not completely forbidden for me, but it's combined with lots of political stuff, paper stuff, and even then, it's not sure that I can attend to to go visit the U.S. So it's not completely off the table, but uh, the chances are very small. I will give it my best. I would love to be with you guys. So. Please don't lose the hope on me. Oh, no. That's the first thing. And how did I get here? Yeah, uh, me and my family, we lived in Iran till I was, I think, four and a half years old. And then the political stuff over there got a little bit edgy. And we decided to yeah, start a new life. My uncle was already in Germany. So for us, the, the, the only solution or the, the best thing was, okay, we joined him in Germany and mm -hmm. yeah, we started our trip, but no one did know at that time that it would take us two years to get over to Germany. Did you drive or fly or how'd you, Just, how'd you start uh, the trip? I think people nowadays, they fly or, or drive easy over here. Uh, we had to... <laughs> It's it's just if if you if you think about some movies where they where they walk, I mean, thousand uh, or well, hundred kilometers till the borders, and then they go with uh, in the back of a bus and all that stuff. That's what I was uh, doing with my mom. We we uh, we paid. I don't know what it's called in English, but people that illegally uh, transport people to other countries. Mm -hmm. um we yeah, you paid like a guide yeah, <laughs> Got it. Uh, and yeah. Even, even if you pay them it's not guaranteed that they will bring you to your destination and yeah. um first of all we we drove to the border of iran and from there it was just walking lots of yeah i think ways there were not a lot of people are where no border controls are and mm. um yeah after quite a few times, we, we managed to go to the next country. And from there, it was a, it was a switch about uh, in the back of buses, in the back of uh, cars, and just crazy stuff. That was the land part of everything. Yeah. Your father was with you at the time because you said no, you were no, traveling? No, he wasn't. You... Just, okay. just me and my mom. And on the way in those two years, we got separated about three times. Um, one of the time, it was your Austria, my man. Huh? Uh, she got, mm -hmm. she, she got, she got. Uh, Austria is a big part of my story, indeed. Uh, but I will come to that later. But in Austria, we got separated. She got in the uh, prison, in the women prison, right. and I was put in the children Heim. I don't, Ben. I don't know if you know what a yeah, Heim, orphanage Kinheim. like orphanage. Awesome. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, for orphanage yeah. uh, children, about, I think, one month, we were separated from each other, and I was a little child, and don't know what's happening right now, so it was a nightmare. How, 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 how old were you at that point? At that point in Austria, uh, I was about six, six years, six years. Fuck, yeah. yeah, okay. I was six and a half when we managed to go to Germany, 
yeah. funny, funny thing border to Germany was we got busted on the border about three times. We tried to walk yeah, so? over to the to the, the through the forest. We got busted on the border. We tried to go with a regular car um, we got busted and three times you got busted and each time when you get busted you will be um taken to the country that you were before so the border of austria okay. um, and italy for example or, or, or swiss, swiss just for example and then our fourth attempt was funny thing we just hopped in a taxi a cab i think it's called in, in english and we told them yeah. deutschland deutschland that's all we said we paid him <laughs> and it worked we got over the border my uncle was there and with him we got we got to the city near the city that we live now it's called dortmund i think you know dortmund because of the football <laughs> team before yeah. and yeah that's the end of the story but on that way we we I have seen some stuff, lived through some stuff. We were eight months in Romania with lots of problems. And, and it was always a struggle with money. You have to pay people to, to, to transport you to the border and all that stuff. And yeah, therefore you have to sometimes take a break, wait till you get money transferred to any way possible it's not like now paypal and everything there wasn't stuff like this you skipped ahead a lot i mean you were how old yeah. were you? six years old and you got separated from your mom and you had yeah i was did you understand we, we I mean, started at four and a half yeah but i mean at six we started with the with the journey yeah yes at six years old you get separated from your mom did you understand that she was going to prison and that you were going to an orphanage did you really like know what was going on or was it just like all of a sudden you guys are gone? No, no, there was, it was just crazy fast stuff happening. You have to imagine you are, you are hiding in a, for example, the first time that we got caught, we was hiding in a forest. Yeah. It's, it just for real, it, it sounds like a movie part, but, uh, we have stuffed. I haven't eaten. That's, that's one thing I really remember. We were really hungry. I haven't eaten for, I think, two days, two days. Yeah. And we got to a field of corn, a corn field. I will never forget that one. I think two days or three days, we hadn't anything to eat. And I was starving. And the corn field was, it was not regular corn that you can just chew. Mm. It was nuts mice. It was the hard corn for, animals. for feeding, feeding the animals. Yeah. And I will never forget, I, I bit in that corn and it was like a rubber, a mix of rubber and stone. But I was so hungry Fuck. that I just, yeah. it was unimportant for me. I just wanted to eat something. And that was, I think, a few hours before we got caught, caught in the night uh, at the border the first time, where we got also separated. Yeah, and it was quick. It was just lights everywhere and hey, hands up with weapons and all that stuff. And then, yeah. We were separated and you don't know what's happening you don't know what will come next to me to me as an outsider never experiencing something like that it's interesting to me that you say you remember the uh, being hungry starving very clearly because my grandfather mm. told me he was a child when in, when when the war happened in austria and he told me always um how much and and how how painful the starving was um and and yeah. I mean, I never experienced it, but I, th there is the parallel. So it's it's super interesting to me that that you remember that so clearly. Uh, it it has to be quite yeah, quite painful. Some, yeah, like, like I told you, I, I was young. I was a little young, and most of the things you just your body and your your, your brain w w doesn't want to remember. You know bad stuff you always try to get mm. rid of bad stuff but there are some key key moments that i always will remember and one of those moments is this place in the cornfield because and and that's something that changed me in my life going on i i have i'm i get angry when people <laughs> waste food yeah I, I, you, you can't imagine it i really uh, I, I will stand for everything i will shit on my job and everything but I will not let it happen that someone wastes food. So that's, 
I will go mad on that topic. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um on, you know? on which uh, i mean why did did they throw your mother into prison i mean what was the was it just illegal immigration or what was the basis yeah it was I illegal immigration and they if i'm correct they um do stuff like interrogations and they will ask you stuff and all that things and i think there is no real place to put the people um, nowadays in Germany, for example, when, when immigrants come in, uh, illegal immigrants, they have places uh, where everyone can stay till they get cleared of whatever yeah. it is, if they will be back yeah. at their place, at their country or stay in Germany. At that time in Austria, there wasn't something like this. It was just, hey, well, we have the prison, we have this until we clear up what, what's happening next with you, you will get separated. And that's and what your happens. father was uh, were your parents divorced or why wasn't he with you? Uh, no, no, no. He he was um. Be, uh, no, I. It's it's not so easy to explain. It was not so easy for him to leave because we have other stuff to organize and we had to have someone who's who's organizing the money transactions and everything involved in this and to to um. Try to get to Germany with two people is much easier than in a family, in a mm -hmm. bigger constellation. Um, yeah, that's and he came, I think, a year after us. So the plan was he, that you guys managed, get there and, and he did what he could financially right. to make sure he, you guys got the For, money you yeah, needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right, right. So you, you always have need to have someone who's doing stuff for you mm -hmm. there because you will not manage to... Uh, Perhaps today, yes, but in that time, it was not easy. Uh, like, hey, I will hop in the plane and then I'm in Germany and say Azul, and that's it. That's not working. Yeah, yeah. E-banking wasn't a thing either. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not for us. Yeah, but you you weren't that's only just traveling and... with your mother. You there was more people involved, right? Like, did did you see there, there stuff were, like there that happen? Lots of people. Yeah. Uh, they, I don't. I think it's not. If we are cursing, so I can talk about other stuff too. I think. Yeah. Uh, lots of crazy stuff happens. Um, it's it's crazy, but now that we are talking, um, even people got shot in front of me. Um, the the people that that um, transport you from one country to another, they are criminals. They are no easy peasy people. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I got a witness of a murder at five years, I think. It was in the middle of our, our college trip, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy, crazy, crazy. What what, what happened? Uh, do you know? Or... Not exactly. I just have dark memories of that moment where one of the one of us, the, us, the people there, are, want to go to another yeah. country. Yeah. One of them was was uh, waving and doing stuff and going in his face. And one one thing got to the next thing, and the next thing I remember is a yeah. a shooting. Yeah. And yeah, like... that's one thing why I told you I'm not into weapons that much. Yeah, I can imagine because... you you're leaving with a group of let's say just twenty people, and at some point yeah. during the trip, like you said, you're hungry, you're starving. One person is hallucinating or or they don't want to go yeah. anymore and this man needs to get the other people there and he's just gonna yeah. fucking shoot him and leave him so he can go keep going with the rest of the people it was more like a riot in in that in that uh, thing that i can remember as far as i can remember there was a riot of one or two people and one of them got shot in front of us so yes that's not always uh like the easy life that we have now Damn. And how did the how did the situation in Austria resolve? I mean, what did they? Uh, yeah, they, they they I don't know really. The first time where they uh, put us, they we got together again, and then they put you on the border from Austria, not to Germany, but the other border. And then we tried again, like I said, and we tried two or three times, and in the end, it worked. But it was always the same. It was nearly the same. But the, the second or third time, we did not get separated. That, that's what I know. Did you? It's just like did, a, did yeah. you then um, apply for asylum, or did, do you call it asylum? 
in Germany. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, in in yeah. uh, in as 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 long when, when you when you get your foot into the country of uh, Germany, yeah. for example, mm-hmm. you just have to say the word asyl. Yeah. And then then they must take care of you and do all that stuff and and uh, do the legal work. But it was not over there. It's not that easy. You have to go uh, to the. Oh, what is the case? You get a case, like something like a case. Why you want to stay in Germany, mm-hmm. and you have to tell uh, the judge your story, why you left your country, why this, why that, and then they decide if you can stay here or you will be put somewhere else. And yeah, we had a complete case and with 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 judges and everything else. And and then they granted you asylum because Iran was too dangerous for you, I guess. Right. Yeah, and right. We are we 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 were uh, because of my grandfather. My grandfather was a big politi- political man in in Iran. And at that time there was a switch in the um, the Hezbollahs took over Iran. And when you were not with them, for them, they you were against them, and then you are mm-hmm. enemy. Mm-hmm. And that's when we left the, the the country because there was not a good hope. The, the real thing is, my mother always wanted me to have a better life and a better, uh, more possibilities for my life in my future. That was always her biggest uh, motivation to leave the country. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean. Weird, and she yeah, and she did I that. Think. She did that for you, right? Excuse me. And she and she did that. Yes, of course, oh, oh, yeah. fully. I don't. I did not have an easy life, even when we were here. It was not. We were not uh, swimming in money or something like this. But but I was never in a bad situation. If I needed clothes, she did everything she could to get me clothes. If I needed anything else, she always tried to give me a regular good life i would call it and she managed for sure and i'm always thankful for that and did you did you get german citizenship uh, uh first of all you you, you get a uh, aufenthaltsgenehmigung it's called um, yeah you can the the allowance to to stay in germany for example yeah. and i don't know how the rules now are but then when you go work and have a regular life so you don't depend on on social stuff and all that stuff um you can apply for the german citizenship after eight years mm-hmm. and that's what we did my mother funny thing is most of the people they come here first of all they take take money from the social system and all that stuff my mother started working as soon as she got her work allowance it's 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 not as easy in germany you need to have the allowance to work yeah And it was after one year she got her allowance and immediately she started to work because she had in, in, in her back, in her mind that we need the citizenship, the real one, not the, not just the allowance. So after eight years we applied and we got granted and now I'm a official German citizen, but the real I'm, one. That, that's what I wanted to ask uh, before with the US, but I thought I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out on the story because it will clear up yeah. anyways. It, when you were a German, yeah. how how can the us deny you yeah i can tell you this uh, there are few countries in the world where you can't put your older citizenship aside for example if yeah. you are italian and you go to germany and you want to have the german citizenship you can choose if you want to stay italian or german yeah, in austria it's the same. and then that's it yeah it's so uh, for example i think turkey greece and some other uh, countries including iran If I'm born in the Iran, I will always stay Iranian as long as I'm setting a foot into Iran, for example. And in my German um, Reisepass and ID, yeah, passport, there is yeah. there is my uh, passport. There is a uh, there is stated that I'm born in Tehran, and that's the thing that's killing me. I have the Persian, uh, the Iran citizenship that I can't put aside. It's not possible for me. I have two citizenships. I'm German and Iranian. Huh. And mm. the, the the main problem for me is I'm born in Tehran, in Iran, Tehran. So that's why I, it's not easy for me to go to America. Okay. Interesting that they are that paranoid. It's not paranoid. about my citizenship. They don't care. They don't care about my citizenship. No, no. It's just... Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's it is what it is. I would assume they are um, just paranoid about you being a double agent or something. <laughs> yeah, that's, who knows? Fucking, <laughs> that's fucking heartbreaking, man. Just because yeah. you were born there, I mean, you came here, you were six and a half, almost seven. Yes. You have like no ties with Iran, right? So nothing. I know what, family and, there, but but it's and you, and you've nothing. you and your family has been done nothing but work for the social system in Germany, and you're treated yeah. like a like a dog, right? Like you can't go anywhere. You can't go to the U.S. I mean, you can go, you, but you can't go to the U.S. It's that's fucking retarded. It makes no sense. Yeah, that's uh, that started with uh, when um, Trump got elected. Trump yeah. got that rule out. And there, I think Somalia is one of the countries, Iran, and there are some countries, but there is a way to go there. But you can't, it's uh, for you, for example, you, you not, but for Ben, for example, he can take mm. a ESTA. It's called ESTA. Yeah. It's yeah. a quick visum, a v- quick visa. No problem yeah, at all. W- it's online. My wife, you can and my, get... my wife and kids have to do that every time we fly. So, you know, US. so, you know, ESTA, yeah. it's quick. Yeah. It's cheap, cheap and quick. For me, for example, it's a visa, a regular visa, and then it's not even over there. You have to do such stuff, show them that you ha- have not been to Iran the last 10 years, for example, and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. That's that's what it is. Have you have you ever been back to Iran to visit family or anything? Or It was around 2010 I was there. Okay. So 14 years ago. Yeah. After that, never again. With your parents or alone? Um, alone, alone. But the problem now is now now we have another problem. If we want to go to Iran, um, I have to go to the military if I go there, or I have to buy my military if I want to go to <laughs> Iran. And the price is is depending on the education that you have. Yeah, and the country and you live in, I, I guess. A, <laughs> yes, and, and 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 I have an engineer's degree, so yeah. I'm fucked. <laughs> it's about uh, thirteen thousand euros for me just to be allowed to buy my military. Um, yeah, buy you out, so uh, to say. Buy me out. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Fuck. That's just a way of saying you. If when you make more money, you have to pay more money because it, yeah. does that make you a better shooter in the military, and that's nah, why you're worth more money? Or <laughs> that's fucking it's, stupid. Dude. It's it's not like Germany or Austria. It's always uh, about money in the yeah, regular countries. That's what there is. Yeah. It's all you can buy everything. I mean, you can't buy yourself out of the Austrian military either. Uh, or or. I, I think that's true for most European states. Yeah. Uh, at least I've well, never was... heard of it. So uh, that yeah, but, makes but, sense. But for example, in Germany, y- you can't dream about uh, giving someone 50 euros in the hand of, of a police officer and say, hey, look the other way. Not possible. Not possible. Not happening. Yeah. Not yeah. happening. And not happening in Austria, I guess. No, no, no. But, but, but for We're example... We're corrupt, I will, but I will... not that corrupt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but I will assure you, in Spain or in Italy... There is a possibility yeah. that yeah, this one yeah, works, south right? of Italy, I can totally see that. <laughs> yeah, and it's on this this one are the good countries. If you go more like Macedonian or stuff like this, never, never, never mind. Yeah. There is always a possibility to pay and get out of trouble. No, no, I see, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, that you that you can officially um, buy out your military time. It's it's the first time I've heard it. I mean. In principle, actually, when I think about it, I think it's it's a good thing. If you can afford it to buy yourself out, why well, not make it available, like transparently yes. and and honestly? Yeah, yeah right. So right. I think, just I, I just heard it the first time. So I think it might be might be a good thing in some circumstances. Um, yeah. But in my case, it's just a pain. In yeah, yeah, totally. I get it. Um, who would you? It, it wouldn't be. Wouldn't it be dangerous to visit Iran for you? Like, no, no. It's just crazy. It's the perception that that people have from the Iran because of the of the media is crazy. Okay. Uh, I, w- I will assure you. It's for for example, if you as a Austrian citizen or even me. It's not. It's not even about the country where you're from. It's just so nice. The people are so good, so nice. 
it's crazy, but you see always the bad things in the news. For example, I, I don't I don't watch TV. I don't watch news on uh, on on the TV. And when the uh, Europe European football stuff was in the breaking time, there was always 15 minutes of news, and they just show bad stuff from around the world. It's just negative, negative, yeah. negative stuff. Yeah. But in Rio, I was there. I had friends of mine there, German friends who've been there, and they have nothing but positive stuff to 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 tell. It's just a really nice place with really nice people. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't not... doubt that people are nice. I, I totally believe that. I, I think also Russians or North Koreans ca can be nice yeah. if you talk you about mean the government, people. <laughs> government. No, no, I'm talking about the people, the citizens. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm. I mean. In generally, I, I just want to challenge that a bit because there must have been a reason for your parents to go away in the first you, place. So I think you know, I, I'm, just asking, I'm just asking What's, if it was dangerous because your parents fled the country or it's 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 a mix. It's, it's one thing is uh, if you see that the country is changing, yeah. for example, it's a hard, hard example, but it's somewhat like when Adolf Hitler came in Germany, people thought that they would see a change in a better way. And then everything changed and they realized, oh, that's not really going in a good way. Yeah. There's war, there's this, there's this. The same thing happened in, in Iran. People had the Shah, the, the Shah Reza, yeah. and they were, they were living, if you, if you watch old clips of Iran, it's just like a copy of USA. Yeah, it's I know, crazy. I know, I know. It's it's like a copy of USA, and the people was fed up, and they said, "Yeah, it's not good. We are not living the best life that we could." And then some Hezbollah crazy dude came and said, "Hey, I will I will show you a better way, a better life." Uh, then the religion Islam came in in a hard way, and people was, "Yeah, let's go," and they changed, and there was a revolution, and then people realized, "Oh, we are screwed," because of harder rules yeah. mm -hmm. uh, everything was harder you can't go with short shorts outside as a man you have to have uh, sleeves that go over your uh, biceps for example all, all it's bullshit and life got harder mm -hmm. for everyone and uh, that's where where we and my, my mother decided to to go and find a more security and more possibilities for me I, that, I, that's why we left yeah I, I think that's kind of what I meant with it being dangerous for you if you just go there being or acting you know western European there nowadays, it would be kind nowadays of dangerous not. <laughs> if you even talk about uh, 14 years when I was there 14 years ago everything was way more strict uh, more rules, more so stuff. So it loosened up I've, by now. You it, mean. Extremely. I have pictures from my mother. My mother was there this year and last year. Yeah. For example, they have to wear um, a kopftuch. What, what is kopftuch in, German, uh, in uh, English? He, he, hijab? Hijab, yes, hijab. They have to wear hijab. Yeah. And when you look at the pictures, you will laugh your ass off. It's just, it's just one piece of fabric hanging on the backside of your head, <laughs> just for, just for, I don't know, just so people can say she's wearing something. It's just that much easier nowadays. People don't give a fuck. They yeah, have but... short, shorts, shorts uh, uh, running around with shorts, uh, 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 um, what a tank top and all that stuff. No one gives a fuck anymore. I mean, that's positive. <laughs> Yeah, that's really positive. When your mom came back, she was officially a German citizen at the point, right? Yes, of course. Yeah. And but she but she still had to wear the uh, ah that's, the, the that's official a, that's uniform. That's a funny one. That's a funny one. If someone is visiting Austria, don't they have to uh, pay, play by the Austrian rules? Even if yeah, but Italian? yeah, but you don't have to, and, and you don't have to wear later hose. <laughs> now, no, for example, if I imagine, I know, but but but, but, <laughs> but for example, for example, I mean... Keith, for example, if in in Austria it's not allowed to to carry a gun, for example, open carry, but you are from yeah, the that's, US, that's different. No, why? Yeah, it's a rule. Okay. Rule is a rule. If if that's the rule, the rule is always from the country, not where you are from. You don't take your rules into I, another country. I think. No, I, I, I think 
the different i mean the gun maybe maybe you have another example but the gun is better example because there is a, a rational and the reasoning behind it whereas yeah. uh wearing a lederhosen or a hijab um yeah. that's purely you know um i don't i don't want to say uh, aesthetics uh, it's, yeah it's aesthetics. crazy it's, you can you can call uh, it like yeah. it is it's crazy it's yeah, just crazy. No, crazy, yeah. but I, I think there is no reasoning behind it in the sense of a gun might be a danger, but wearing a lederhosen to be cultural appropriate, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the reasoning is just different. So I think it's, that's a bad example to compare it with. It, it's, it could be a bad example. It was a little bit extreme, but, but in, <laughs> the end, it's, in, in the end, it's about, it's about uh, rules of, of, of a country. I don't, myself, Okay. I'm not taking part in that bullshit. I, I don't like it. I don't. But it's the rules. I can't change it. I can live with it and no, go no, I there, get it, or yeah. I can, or I can stay away yeah. from it like I do now and don't go there. You know. But yeah. for example, I have to live with the rules. And, and like I said, it's just funny nowadays. They they just wear whatever they want, and it's it's more show than anything else. But do I don't you know think where it's, this is it's... going? It's getting back to before the Shah, right? Shah is it? I think I think uh, it will take a little bit longer. I think it will take a, another revolution in another way to get there, but they are on a good way. But mm, I think it will take another ten to twenty years. How how are the people doing economically and all that? Because I know economically the the Iran is pretty isolated from the Western world at least. Yes, but I don't know. They, uh, they have a lots of regulations now. Embargo, yeah. it's called. I don't know if it's called in English too. Yeah, Embargo. Yeah. yeah uh, so. They have lots mm -hmm. of problems, but um, everything got way way more expensive than before. Um, that's one thing that people get, and they. They are not happy about, for example, meat and stuff is very expensive. Not everyone can afford stuff like this nowadays. It's not taking a good, a good turn, I would call it. Mm -hmm. But but the the, the 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 separation between poor people and rich people is very big. In Germany, for example, we have lots of middle uh, earners, people that earn. Good, mm -hmm. but not too good. They are not poor. They are not. They are not rich. There's a lots of people in in Iran. It's more separated. It's more poor people or very rich people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's and yeah. therefore you you depending on the area where you are, it's very luxurious and big cars and Porsches and all that stuff. Everything that you know from every other regular country. And there are parts of the city, for example, in Tehran, in the south of Tehran. It's just poor people, and you see that the economy is not working like it should. Okay. Now, uh, how 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 did your father join you um, back in the day when your mother applied? And I, I, I don't was, think he had a way shorter uh, uh, travel than we had. He was it was around six months for him, and it was fairly easy for him. He got one. I don't know which country. I would lie if I tell you the country, but he get, he got one uh, interrogation. He was was asked stuff with a po, po, what is it, um, a lügen detector, poliome, poliometer, or what is it called? Uh, lie detector. Stuff, lie, lie detector. detector. Yeah, but he, he it's funny. Uh, he got uh, lie detector pieces on his on his body, and he had to answer stuff. It's <laughs> like I told you. Sometimes when I think about that stuff, it's just like a movie. But yeah, he managed. He managed to 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 come over here fairly quick. Fairly quick, not quick, but uh, yeah. And and what what professions did your parents have in Iran? And what did they? What what occupations yeah. did they my, get in my Germany? Mother, my mother uh, studied. Um, uh, what, what, let me uh, religions. I would call it the, the religions. Uh, yeah. It's uh, theology. Mm -hmm. theology. Yeah. I don't, don't know what it's called in theology. English. Theology. 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 And yeah. turned yeah. over here to to uh, a hairdresser, hairstylist. Okay. Um, she did her master mm -hmm. after I think three years. She did her master here and had her own saloon for the last I don't know twenty years or so. And to be honest, my father never got a real, what, what, what can you call it, a foot in, in the real market, in the real 
profession like your parents or mm -hmm. anyone else. He, he, he never managed to, to blend in in the society. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. We, we did not, after that, we did not have such a good connection to my father and yeah, they got divorced and stuff like this. But yeah, it was most of the time it was me and my mom. Okay. Is he still alive? No, uh, he passed away three years ago, three or four years. Yeah. Okay. And before that, we did not have any contact for over 10 years. So it's how life sometimes plays. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what did he do in Tehran? If he, if I might be so curious. <laughs> right now, um, he was, uh, his, his, um, not his parents, his uncle and the, they got a pharmacy, um, production, a company, a big one, a very okay. big one. And he was part of this pharmaceutical stuff over there. I don't know his real profession in the company, but he was part of the company. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. Not that bad, but uh, things no. turned turned otherwise here in Germany and uh, drugs and all that stuff. So he took a very bad turn in a, in a bad direction. But stuff made... I mean, if yeah. it, if, if, for your mom's profession, I mean, she came over, you guys got the citizenship, you, she did what she wanted to do, and the very last fuck you was to be a hairdresser. That's that's also pretty pretty amazing, no? When you have to cover your hair and cover everything, <laughs> and she came over here, and like, I'm going to do everybody's hair, <laughs> that's good, right? Yeah, that, that's a good yeah. thing, yeah. I never, thought, the last fuck I never you. thought about that one, but yeah. No, my mom, my mom is a is a real warrior. I, I'm not just telling this because she's my mom, but that woman is is so strong. You 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 wouldn't believe it what mm -hmm. that woman managed to do without any help, without any knowledge of the country, and it's just it's blowing my mind sometimes. For example, and you talked in the beginning of the show. I don't know if we recorded or not. We talked about the business stuff and all the bureaucratical yeah. stuff. And sometimes I get I get letters and all this stuff. I open them and I, I have a brain fog. I think, what the fuck do they want from me? What is this? And <laughs> and, and my mom, for yeah. example, she 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 doesn't she, at that time in the beginning she does not speak that good German and all this stuff. But she managed to to get everything right. You know, N never paid the bills mm. late. I'm always amazed by her by her by the way she handled stuff. Two today it's just crazy i mean it speaks for her but i also think and i don't want to downplay it but i also think um she had the right motivation i mean imagine if she made that happen how much she wanted it to make happen and why because she um knew probably her perspectives in iran yeah. and really knew it was without any good alternative so so she yeah, I'm, I'm just getting at she was super motivated i'm thinking yes, right 100 percent. but but yeah. let me tell you this one it's it's just it's it's not just about the motivation as it is it's just about the drives that she had to to pull through all that bullshit that my father put her in for example yeah. they had it, it, at one time in 1998 they opened the, that one is really really crazy i don't know why but they opened a restaurant <laughs> don't ask me why they opened the restaurant and, <laughs> okay. and combined with yeah. that, it's a lot of depth that you take to get a big restaurant. And it was big. It was rather big. So they, they took lots of money and uh, opened the restaurant together. And my, my father, like I told you, was, was more and more addicted to drugs and opium. It's a drug from uh, Iran and all that stuff. And, and yeah. people that are, that are addicted to drugs, they, they steal, steal money and he started to steal from our own money, from our own, uh, um, yeah, stuff that we earned. He took and took his drugs. So over the time, we got bankrupt with the, with the business. The business went down. He was, hey, I'm gone, I'm out. And everything was on the name of my mother. So that woman, and that's why I tell you she's a warrior, that woman was left with 200,000 mark at that time. It was mark, not euros. Uh, yeah. with 200,000 marks on her name. And if, if I think about it today, if I'm tomorrow, I have a debt of 200,000 euros and I don't have a real job. 
I don't know if I could manage to to get anything going in the future. But that yeah, woman managed to pay every cent of this money. That's just insane. That's crazy. And all of that because of my father and all that stuff. And at the time I was a little kid, I couldn't help her with anything. No, no, I get it. The only thing that I can <laughs> do now is to pay her back, to buy her nice stuff, to take her out, whatever, whatever it is, I pay for. Does she still have to work, or is she in? in uh, she in, works in a little bit person. here. She works. Yeah. She has uh, uh, her stuff going on, but um, yeah, like I told you, I, I take care of lots of stuff for her. Well. <laughs> crazy story <laughs> quite <laughs> crazy <laughs> yeah i tell you it's, it's, yeah. it's just but in the end everything that happened to me and happened to us just made me a, a i would call it a stronger person there is always yeah. a 50 50 chance Definitely. to to go in the wrong direction with stuff like this but i had always a, a back a, a, a very strong mother that backed me and always watched me and uh I was always in my mind, I had always in my mind, I can't disappoint her. I can't go the back bad route. Drugs and, and, and not working, not go and take a good okay. for profession. It was always in the, in the back of my head. Were, I had to get were, stuff going. Were you aware of the, of the, of the drug yes, problems course, with yes, your father? Like, was that something that you yes, saw? Of or? Okay. It, it, it was just crazy. Let, let me tell you this, this, this man was not hiding anything just, just crazy stuff <laughs> just crazy stuff it, now nowadays when i think about it it's just mind-blowing how someone can do stuff like this but addiction is addiction i can't talk about stuff like this because yeah, i'm not addicted to stuff like this i'm addicted to what, what, what do i know eating or whatever but <laughs> not to stuff like no, this no. it's it's not only addiction i think the the generation of our parents um, and I mean, I talked a lot about this with my friends, the generation of our parents, to a certain extent, didn't give as much fucks as we gave, yes, give today. Ima imagine only the smoking part, yeah, the smoking. Definitely. We were in a car, my mother was smoking, yeah. my father was smoking, the whole car was yeah. smoking, and they did not give a fuck. No, no, that, it's crazy. Uh, but uh, but it, with so many small things, and I mean, you could argue that the generation of today or the the, the parents of today are over managing or overthinking things. Um, either way, but I, I think the statement that they gave less fucks back then uh, is, is still true. One hundred percent. Again, just just one example, so you know how crazy that stuff is. But when my mother was working and he had to watch me as an eight-year-old kid, for example, he took me with him to his friends where he got he, he bought his drugs and used his drugs in front of me. That's just crazy. Even if you're an addict, you, you would put your kid in, in, in a place, in a room, and do your stuff in another room. But it was just mind-blowing when I think about it now. But hey, yeah, it's... Yeah. I can laugh at it now, you know, because I, I closed that case, you know, I'm completely in peace with me and my life. So, so it's not worrying me anymore. And I don't think in a bad way. I just laugh about it. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what alternatives do you have? Nothing. I, mean, Nothing. I think, yeah, I think, I think you have to take it as it is and, and maybe take your, um, positives out of it in the sense that yeah you pull through it and 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 can learn from the mistakes also so I, mean, sure. I think that's an important thing um i i think i learned a lot of from the mistakes of of my parents so um yeah, yeah. not by them teaching me how to do better but just by observing <laughs> yes i know no for, for, for sure yeah, yeah. So I think that's uh, yeah, just a positive attitude that you have, and that's a good thing. Yes, I try my best. I don't know. I I, I can say as a, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how many people know all this shit, but as a as a recovered, I would I call myself recovered addict yeah. also. Uh, that 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 wasn't your dad. That was, that was like com completely something different. That was he. he that wasn't <clears throat> his his mind state. He was dealing probably with all the problems and the shit that you guys went through 
and why you had to leave and he never perhaps perhaps uh like completely accepted it i guess um, like i told you i'm not it's it's now it's easy for me to say i'm not ma mad yes uh, would i have loved a real father that's with me that got with me to through all that stuff that i managed in my life yes but life is not uh <sighs> always a thing from wishes you can't wish stuff and it, it happens it is what yeah. it is but i've like i said i'm in peace with everything that yeah. happened and he had his stuff going on and that's what it took him or uh, that's where stuff went that's what it is yeah all that shit made you who you are today and you fucking look at you now right <laughs> don't look at me now <laughs> Put a few pounds on. He's making double S crying reverse hooks yeah. for left-handed people, and just because of people <laughs> like Kamon, people people that are looked up to and still look up to, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. The the knife might be a mistake. The, the knife <laughs> machine. No, no, it's not a mistake. No, it's funny. Uh, uh, I talked to I don't know who I talked to last time. It was about uh knife and progression and and what, what i how i started and everything and i told him hey there were there were a few people at the beginning when i was looking up knives after i i started working on my first knife i know that i went to instagram and i looked hashtag knives or cutting tool or whatever it was and some of that stuff was from you ben and it was just crazy <laughs> where stuff when, so the hashtags made sense after all. In that case, <laughs> yes. In that case, it was another time. But yeah, it, it was just, it, it's crazy. And now we are talking together in a podcast. It's just crazy. And I'm really, really happy how stuff went. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it feels so abstract in a sense because I would have never imagined to have, what, what I find amazing mostly not is the work. I mean, I could do the same work and sell locally possibly and you too, I think. But I, what I find more amazing is um, how many people, because you said it, how many people you get the opportunity to talk to via email, customers, you for example, get to know um, so the the whole community aspect is not to be underestimated, and I think I think it's it's pretty special with knife making because I I, I see some other crafts, and I I don't see it as 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 tight as uh, a, a, of a community. Yeah, you know, community you know one thing that separated yeah. the knife community from other communities. I have a I have a nickname in my friends, uh, and they call me project measured because uh, knife making is not my first project i always have stuff that i like and then i i dive deep into it and at one time it's always the same i try to i want to do it myself for example i did a story i don't know if you saw it with the ceramics that i want to turn my own ceramics and all that stuff and and, <laughs> and, and i love that, that's for real i like to i want to do in the future a little bit ceramic stuff uh top fun you know and and yeah, and, and yeah. it's just yeah, crazy and yeah. uh, all my friends yeah we know where this is one where this one is going uh, in, a, in 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 two <laughs> years you are going exhibition for ceramics and all that stuff and i said no no that's not good and uh, why i'm telling <laughs> you this is because i had other stuff in in the past right everything i do i want to do as good as i can and there are always communities smaller communities bigger communities but one thing that differentiates the knife community from others is the the support and the openness for example when i when i ask uh unknown someone who doesn't know me doesn't know my stuff and i ask him something i would say 98 percent of the time i will get a nice answer a nice uh, description or and, and they try to help and and that's not yep. always the case yes yeah because no matter how they tell you, how they explain it or tell you, yeah. uh, it still takes practice and it takes years to get to that point. It, yeah. it, it takes time yeah. to get to that point, but you can help. For example, Ben, and he knows I always uh, thank him for that. In the beginning, I was asking so stupid questions. When I think back at it, I'm ashamed of myself. But that's what it is. You have you have questions in the beginning and you <laughs> don't know shit. And I know how that is because I get sometimes questions like this from new newbies, people that started knife making, and I always have to laugh a little bit and I try to answer them as good as possible because I know I was at that point at one time and someone like Ben Camon helped me, you know? 
I, I don't remember any stupid questions because my memory yeah. is bad. So good for you. Good uh, for you. That's a positive good thing for you. For you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Um, but I wonder, I wonder what the reason behind it is. If 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 it's if it's coincidence or um, if there is some, yeah, some, some some reason behind why that community is so open, the way it developed or or something like that. I I I think about it occasionally but i haven't come to a conclusion yet about that to you know put a put a pin on why this community is more supportive and more open and more welcoming to new craftsmen um or or even within older craftsmen i mean we in austria have a chat group where i think 30 people are in and we talk all the time about yeah all kind of stuff mm jokes as well but I, you know a, a tight community I have, I have an idea perhaps it's it's because it's a handcrafted thing and even if it's not the most beautiful thing that a beginner does it's something that you created with your own hands and perhaps that's what everyone re respects i don't know perhaps it's something like this i don't know yeah but isn't that would be true for pipe making or or, or ceramics as well i yeah you know it's, we can talk about yeah. the ceramic community in a in a few years, but not now. <laughs> what other projects did you have? Because I'm curious what what you dove in, in into. The past, in the past, <laughs> yeah, I was I was big on uh, reptiles, for example. Um, I had lots of animals and reptiles, and I breeded them. But for example, the, the, that's what I tell, tell you when I when I what, that's what I mean when I tell you I want to do it as good as possible. Um, chameleons, I breeded chameleons, and usually you have a success rate of I said seventy to seventy five percent when you have a batch. Uh, they they do X, and seventy five percent, seventy seventy five percent of them. Um, stay alive till the end it's 11 months till they hatch and mm -hmm. i i started to think about the incubation time uh i'm i started to looking at the place where chameleons live how the weather changes and um the technical stuff behind it the ther thermostat and all that stuff that regulates the temperatures in the incubator yeah. and uh, i talked to a lot of people and managed to build myself a box that will automatically, I programmed a computer that will automatically change the temperatures to the right temperatures that are existing in the area where the chameleons live regularly. And <laughs> with that one, on, on precise, on 0 0.1 Celsius, it's, it's fucking uh, ex, uh, uh, precise. And I managed to hatch a yeah. uh, 98% success rate on the, on the <laughs> first hatch that I had. It's just how much you 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 think <laughs> about stuff, how much yeah. you read about stuff, how much you exchange with other people, and that's one thing I do a lot. If if, if it's making knives, if it's uh, reptiles, or another thing that I did was photography, for example, and I I managed to to work myself up to one of the biggest companies in Germany, and they hired me before my studying, before I studied my my craft, so. That's another thing, photography and how to do stuff, how light, lighting works. I took workshops. I bought, I don't know, about 50 books. I visited workshops. It's just, I just love to learn in any case. And that's why Project Mershot exists. That should be an Instagram tag. <laughs> Project Mershot. Pro Project Mershot. No, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, the... I, I, I mean, that's a common story you hear. I mean, I, I think a lot of knife makers are addicts in themselves but you're you're addicted to i mean everybody has an addiction some people run some people are doing fitness or weight yes. loss we just like completely fixate on one thing and then do 100% oh, right, right and the the, the fitness I mean, part is also one of my things in the past i have a fitness trainer license every license that you can imagine and i was looking like photoshopped a few years ago so that's another thing like i told you if i do something i try to do it as good as possible yeah. but now yeah. i'm fat mershot <laughs> by the way guys it saved me it saved me i got cut with, uh, i cut myself with a kiridashi and my belly fat saved me 
Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> recently? I, yeah, yeah. For uh, three or five, four, four days ago, I cut myself. Ooh, fuck, badly. how deep? How deep was the cut? Uh, about three centimeters. It was really deep. Oh, you're really fat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was. It was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two uh, and a half, three centimeters. No, I know. I know you're not. <laughs> no problem. It's just bad timing at the moment. My belly. Um, did you have to get stitches? Yes, of course. Yes. Fuck. How how did it happen? How, what not... happened? <laughs> don't tell it. The, in Germany, it's called BG. Berufsgenossenschaft. Don't call, don't tell them. I, you know, when you're finished with your work and you do the st stupid stuff at, in, in the end, I had the kiridashi and my customer wanted it a little bit shorter, about two centimeters shorter. And I had this kiridashi in my head, completely finished the grinding. Everything was perfect. The facets, everything. And I said, okay, he wanted it a little bit shorter. I took my angle grinder in one hand, the kiridashi in the other hand, did not fixate it to anything, yeah. just in the air. I said, I told myself, hey, come on, that's a, a little cut and it's finished and you know when the angle grinder bites into the metal and you mm. get something like a kickback yeah. that one happened yep. and the kiridashi swung ah. out of my hand and got a rotational movement and cuts through my belly it was i was lucky um kiridashi is pretty pretty short already why does he need it shorter yeah it was a little bit too long i forged it uh it was just a little bit too long for his likings. I showed him pictures and uh, measurements, and how he was like, mm, "Do it a little bit shorter." And I said, "Okay, no problem." Do you have a security camera in in your shop? <laughs> <laughs> ben, ben, you, you you have to. Uh, I tell you, you won't believe it. You won't believe in what shop I do work. You have to imagine the smallest shop that you can imagine, the smallest okay. shop, and then you divide that by two. And that's Dude, my shop. I just imagined the toilet, so don't tell me to imagine okay, the smallest so shop I can. A, I, will, I, will, I will take pictures for you. There is no security camera, no nothing. My forging shop is a little bit in a different place. It's a little bit better, but man, there is no place for a camera or stuff like yeah. this. Did, did, the, did the Kiridashi only cut through a t-shirt or was there more? In my bad was usually I worked with a, a t-shirt or a pullover and uh, a sweatshirt and a um, leather apron. Um, yeah. apron. This time I just had, because it's warm outside, I just had a t-shirt oh, on. Fuck. So, so, so yeah. that, that's always, always those stories, the mistakes uh, stack stack up and yeah. then it results in... <laughs> it's crazy. But, but in the first place, it's my mistake to hold the uh, angle grinder and the metal in both yeah. hands, so... Um, uh, although yeah, it's uh, on me. I, I mean uh, I think everyone could admit to at least one uh, similar story but with not a bad outcome so I think everyone yeah, did stupid things in the past so. <laughs> but it is, it is what yeah. it is it's funny I, I can laugh it, my, my first initial thought was my girlfriend was upstairs and my first thought I saw, looked at my belly it was bleeding I put and I had dirty hands and all that stuff, you know? I put the gloves yeah. off, I just hold it, and my first thought was, oh, fuck, she's going to freak out. She's going to freak out. She's going to kill me. I'm not, <laughs> no, no, because I'm myself, I'm completely easy with blood. I'm completely, I'm chill as fuck when stuff like this happens. Because it's important. You can't go crazy and all that stuff. My first thought was just my girlfriend. She, she's going to kill me. She's going to, no, because when she sees blood, one drop of blood, Oh my God, what happens? And all that stuff. The door opened and I told her, please, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. So and then I showed her and she, we have to go to the hospital. And I was like, nah, it's good. I will put a, um, there are, there are some, uh, uh, rub, uh bands or what it was, eight, eight bands or what is it called? Yeah, Cluster. patches. Matches, there are especially for cuts to put them together. The yeah. cut, yeah, I think and it's I called had, like a I butterfly had, bandage. Yes, yes, and I had one of those, and I said, "Girl, don't worry, I have one of those here." And she looked, <laughs> and she looked into the wound. It was it was open, completely open. She said, 
you're crazy. We're going to the hospital. I said, okay. You know what have, would have and been my it. first worry? I would have been worried that I punctured my intestines and I would have looked if shit is running out there because that's super dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you, you, you are not, you have, don't have a belly like oh, me. Oh, I, so I do. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was sure, I was sure that it's not in the muscles or something, something like this. It's just uh, the fat the, the the upper part but it's okay it's that's man right. with, with that's what with it three t- centimeters of fat i can compete easily <laughs> it's not it's not completely three <laughs> centimeters but i don't know if i i have to watch uh i have to look at the uh, kiridashi there is there is some blood you, you just see how deep it did, went i i can measure it for no, you if the seller yeah like yeah that. i just wanted to ask did the customer take it after that <laughs> 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 no no i i still not finished it because i have a little bit it's just like uh a little bit afraid to touch it again i don't know if you know if you ever had an accident where you, where you are after that you are just a little bit worried to go again at the project so i think yeah. tomorrow i will start it again to finish it but yeah i needed a little break from that kiridashi yeah I would have bled out in that in that closet or workspace that you had because as soon as I see my own blood, I'm fine with everybody else's, but if I see mine, uh, I'm I'm passing out. So I probably would have bled out and died in the closet or wherever you were. Nah, <laughs> yeah, ah, I can't. That's... I pa- I pass out like immediately. I can feel it coming. I get cold sweats. I sit down. Crazy. No, no, I'm completely fine with stuff like this. Don't know why. Uh. Yeah, bleeding out in in the shop. I I I I had I had yeah. those uh, thoughts in my shop as well because I'm working alone all day and um, yeah. I bought myself one of those um, uh, leverage bandages. How are they called? Tourniquets. Tourniquets. Because yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw it in one of Roman Kaz's stories, and I thought if you cut yourself because something goes flying and and cuts your artery in the foot or the hand you have to be quick yeah. because otherwise even if you get to your smartphone and call someone they won't arrive in time you're bleeding out and i have yeah. it hand in my shop i mean i hope i don't ever have to use it but i'm thinking bleeding out in your shop is probably yeah. as a knife maker working alone one of the bigger uh, probabilities to die yeah. not not yeah. hurting yourself as long as you don't yeah. sorry as long as you don't use a buffer everything is fine um the big enemy the buffer yeah not only i mean i'm i'm thinking uh, for example i polished the spine on the scotch bread uh with yeah. the well, catching yeah, yeah yeah but not not on, not really catching because i'm careful with that i'm worried when the belt rips and then the belt slaps the blade oh and that could be happening at any Damn. time, just randomly. And I'm mm. happened to Toby, uh, Metal Monkey, I guess. I think true. He got a, a slap a year ago. But... Yeah. yeah, 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 with a forty grit, I think, <laughs> in the face. Yes, yes. Fuck. Yeah, forty grit to the face. That's bad. Yeah, I mean, it was it was more like a scarf. It wasn't that bad. But uh, imagine that belt yeah. catching onto a blade, and and throwing that thing around with twenty to thirty meters per second um that's that that's that's a recipe for fun uh so yeah no not good i have one one time i got a belt that got cut for itself but you can if you don't work with with headphones with loud music that's why i stopped hearing loud music when i do my stuff uh, you can and hear you can it tell when it's about to you, break you can, yes you can tell it's a tick 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 and, and then Always, when I hear that, I, I take a step aside and go to my uh, frequency, uh, frequency, what is it called? Uh, v, VFD. Frequency drive, yeah. VFD, yeah. right. VFD, and then turn it off immediately. But yeah, one time it got, but but I heard it and stepped away. So yeah, but no loud music for me. I've never had a belt break, but I, I, that sound I know from the bandsaw, you can tell when the bandsaw blade's about to break. <laughs> oh, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that one isn't as dangerous, right? I mean, I've never heard someone getting hurt. No, it just gets stuck yeah, in the machine right. itself. Well, it's, but... it's a crazy loud sound. It's loud when the when the bandsaw breaks or, or cuts. It's just loud. I had it a few months ago yeah. because uh. it's on a lot of tension. Did you at least have your cover on the rectangle grinder, the the safety, you know, 
So. Always, always. No, no, no. Perfect. I'm not one of those guys. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I don't know if you, if, you, if you know the story about my hand. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I had an accident. I, have a, I had a big accident uh, with my hand because I used a, a cup grinder. You know what a cup grinder is? Yeah. If you have one of those, throw them those away. thick discs, right? They, they are around eight centimeters yeah. high. Yeah. Uh, and... What I did not know at that time, and most of the people don't know, there is an expiring date on those stuff, I... always, on any disc. You can look it up. It's an expiring date. And I was at my forging shop, and I wanted to grind a uh, Damascus uh, billet um, to clean, uh, grind it clean. And the, the, one who, uh, the woodworker at my, sh at my place in the near told me, hey, you don't need to go and get yourself a new disc. I have one here. And he gave me this uh, the the cup grinder, and I put it yeah. on the grinder, started, and it was the the puck puck, and suddenly boom, a big explosion. And first first I did not get what what was happening, and I looked down and looked at my hands, and my complete hand was open. Oh. The the disc exploded in every direction, and I was lucky to have the um the 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 shoots the angle grinder yeah the covers yeah the, the cover on it catched a lot yeah. of stuff but because the the cup was higher than the cover it still flew mm -hmm. everywhere now and then yeah yeah now i don't want to get out the horror stories but imagine one no. piece hitting your penis <laughs> on that day on that day i were uh Apron, a leather apron. Oh, okay. So that's, that's, that's important. That's the first day he that, checked. That's important. <laughs> no, it, it's just crazy. I got, I got, um, um, oh, what? No, surgery. Uh, uh, surgery on the same night because I had lots of pieces mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, mm -hmm. cup grinder in my hand. I got uh, surgery, and I'm such a crazy dude. I told the doctor who was uh, working on my hand. I told her, please don't throw it away. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. And I still have the little pieces and I wanted to go and put epoxy on it and do a spacer out of it. Make a, make a, knife, yeah, make a knife handle piece that's kind of out cool. of it. That's like the yeah. bullet you've got shot with <laughs> keeping that. Yes. Yeah, it's just crazy. She, she looked at me because I had my left arm completely... Uh, uh, um, Shattered? Yeah, or... tall. No, no, no. Um, in, the, in the surgery... They they go through your um, my English is very bad. Axel, I don't know. They they put stuff in there so you don't feel the pain when they oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do the surgery. Anest and I was yeah. I was aware. I, was, I could talk to them and everything, but my I can't I couldn't feel my left arm. And so I was looking at her and I told her, please don't throw it away. And she looked at me like, hey, you're crazy, <laughs> dude. You are crazy. We are in the middle of surgery. And she showed me. She gave but, me the the box, but I, yeah. I have a, a I have a, a tangent on that because it's interesting. You know that cup. Um, I know those yeah. discs are relatively heavy, and I know uh, a rectangle uh, 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 angle grinder uh, turns at a very high rotation, uh, very yeah. high uh, RPMs. But do you know the story um, back in the day when they were uh, grinding metal or or knives on those big wheels like the Japanese do, but they were doing it in those. Yeah. Uh, mills uh, standing next to a river or something like that Ooh, uh, okay. for for when they were bursting uh, people died on the regular because yeah, yeah. those big wheels they all of a the sudden they were throwing around 20 kilograms or more pieces uh, and they were hitting yeah. you i just had to think about that because it's yeah. it's you know it's kind of similar with those stones bursting and yes. speed, speed is a bit big thing on them they have regularly they have a showing a maximum speed of 10,000 and the angle grinder is uh, that 16. I had on, on that time was at 15, 16, but you could turn it down and I turned it already down. So yeah. I was watching on that one uh, because on that such a big thing that centrifugal uh, forces, it's called in German, uh, something like mm. centrifugal, centrifugal, centrifugal force. uh, yeah. uh, forces, they pull stuff, like I said, it's heavy rotation mass and therefore but but i turned it already down so it was not at full speed but it was still it was expired a long time ago so the i would call it the glue 
in mm-hmm. that stuff did not hold up and the rest is history ah oh, fuck <laughs> guys don't use i've never I've, those discs yeah that's crazy i've never had that happen but i have had uh on a wire wheel like a piece of the wire come flying out and it, like stabs almost through your finger completely uh, if you can <laughs> can imagine that that now, sucks now, that's that sucks now imagine doing ceramics that's not bad yeah no 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 danger yeah, no dangerous <laughs> <laughs> after the after the first uh, knife yeah. exhibition knife keith keith i think you know i was i was so mad it was crazy i did all my stuff in the latest time possible i was just exhausted yeah. and i told yeah. everyone i will not make knives anymore i will do only ceramics <laughs> i can't do this <laughs> shit anymore <laughs> yes because i'm i'm not like like Tamun. you are very good at your time management you have your stuff on point everything works out and I do, ah, oh, yeah, I have another week. Oh, yeah, I will start next week. Oh, I will start tomorrow. I will start next week, you know? And then <laughs> you look at the at the, at the uh, uh, clock and it's, damn, I don't have any time. Yeah. And then you have to go quick. But I can, yeah, I, I would like to see you do some cer- ceramics. <laughs> the day will come. I have I have got for my, for my birthday, my girlfriend, um, gifted me a, a a card for 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 a course a, a, a course sorry. um um a, a cer- ceramic class, ceramic yeah. class a ceramic class i did not mm. uh yeah. do it till now but i will and after that you can see sheer ceramics no problem <laughs> at all it's fun. I did. I did some of that when I was in high school. That was a class yeah. for the people who didn't want to do anything else. <laughs> it was like an easy class. <laughs> no football, no wrestling. I took class uh, ceramics and shop, metal shop, wood shop, all the nice. easy stuff. Yeah, I would. I would have loved stuff like this in a school, but I was in a regular gymnasium where there is always just theoretical stuff. Nothing too practical. Me too. Eat the right way. Hey, so yeah. guys, did you hear about the uh, the contest we have? Did anybody read it? Does anybody read our posts? I don't know. Nope. <laughs> look, I wasn't, looking... I wasn't at, at <laughs> Instagram the latest days. I don't know. What contest? We're looking for we're looking for listeners or anybody who would like to do a read for our um, sponsor. Oh, I heard that. Pelican Paste. <laughs> So for any of the listeners, um, if you can do a short read for us, talk about Pelican Paste, uh, what you use it for, uh, how you like it. We have a prize for the best recording or the best ad. They're going to get a piece of um, Raindrop Damascus from Ox Tools. And so far we have zero entries. What? So oh. It's your chance. Come on. Do your, best, you do your best French voice. <laughs> <laughs> Pelican paste. Pelican paste. Uh, uh, oui. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, I, will have to, I will have to drink some beers and then we can talk about it. Uh, yeah, what about a... Matt? Why doesn't he do the Adrid? For fuck's sake. Baltic Plates was right. He should do it. Yeah, I tried. I tried. Maybe we'll get him to do um, it. Um, I mean. What? What? <laughs> what have... Get him to do it? You have to harass him into doing it. <laughs> yeah, we have to convince him that he's the only one and the best person for the job, and nobody else can do oh, it. Okay, that's him. praise him a little bit, kiss his ass, and then that's a means. very kind approach. <laughs> I would have called him German a bunch <laughs> until he did it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? We're at two hours and ten minutes Damn. already. Time flies by. I think that's a show. Or... Yeah, it was yeah. a nice one. Well, yeah, it was good. Meshad, I want to thank you for sharing your story, as difficult as it might have been. No, it's okay. It's yeah. okay for me. Come on for jumping Anytime. in. Anytime. For my, the two slackers that don't show up to the show. <laughs> They're just lazy, but we know that. We can, we can take over. Yeah. We can take over the, I want to thank the podcast. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> WFI Europe version 2.0. And I want to quick thank all of our patrons for su- supporting the podcast. You guys can find us on patreon.com. And so far we have Christoph Stiegler from Kanji Knives, Sven from Nord Artesian, um, Johan Fagelin from Fagelin Bladesmith, Travis Haynes from Bird, 
Birdforge and the maker of Pelican Paste, Roy Rutten. Uh, ben, who's the French guy? Chez Darchon. Chez Darchon. Right. That's right. <laughs> Paul Belette from Belette the Handmade. Coy Baker from Baker Forge and Tool. Pin Van Delph from Van Delph Woods. Mr. Alex Greenaway, one of our top contributors. Cadoso Dives from to- uh Yeah, sorry, that was a miss up, mix up, mix up. Yeah. English, German, French, everything. Uh, B- Bob Workman from the Shoe Shed. Richard Schultz, Fingal Ferguson, Oliver Tobin from Tobin Machines, and Cochrane Dives. Thanks to all the patrons. And hopefully uh, Albert doesn't have too much trouble editing this episode, but I think it went pretty good. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. 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 Titus. Uh, damn we talked about a lot of shit huh (laughs) crazy we did it Uh, I'm very curious what Albert will um, take for the for the intro (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah all the shit we talked about in the beginning I was recording it all because he like picks some stuff out and puts it in there so yeah yeah. he'll find something yeah I mean I don't know I don't know when he's coming back though what is he doing huh Aren't they building their new shop? He, I, I think they won some kind of a, um, uh, what the hell do you call it? Uh, an auction. They were looking for some machines, okay. and they got a surface oh, grinder, and they have to pick it up in, in, in France. They, they, That's they are, the fuck about the fuckers. They They're both jobless, full time. They've made no money the last month and a half because they've been moving shop. And they just spent like fifty grand and on that's, machines that's while they I moved in there. Plus, it's crazy. the foundations they made and all that they shit. They even they even got a new shop, right? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I don't, the, sometimes the I'm shop. asking myself how stuff like this works, but some somehow it works. Cla- classes, I'm telling you guys, classes. They get when they do a class, they have like seven to eight students. Do that a oh, couple okay. times a yeah, month. And yeah, yeah. You live in gold. I, I'm, I'm not the right one for teaching stuff. I, I get frust- frustrated no. really quick. Yeah. I had, you, you, and impatient. You, you want to hear the horror story? My, my girlfriend wanted to do a knife for her father, but she wanted to do it completely yeah. on herself. It was crazy. I just have to watch and tell her what to do. I tell you guys, don't do stuff like this. Yeah. Um, how long did it take? Um, like 40 hours? Yeah, if you, if you put it together, it, it, it was not so long. We had always breaks in between because she works on a full-time I work. But turned out great in the end. But it was, the, the way to, to finish the knife was nerve-wracking for me. And, and that's only your girlfriend. You can talk real yes. to her. Whereas with a customer, you have to pretend that you're friendly. <laughs> That's the one thing. And the other thing is that I have my problems with. If I do uh, something like this, I show people how to do stuff. But in the end, it always ends as a copy of your own work, you know? And that's something that I don't really like. Uh, yeah. uh, it, I don't know how to, how to show people and tell them if it's a newbie, yeah, do your own thing. How is it possible? I, yeah, I mean, in a, no, in, really. a, in a course, yeah. I mean, all the people giving courses make relatively generic knives in the course anyways, yeah. I would say, right? And that's, mm. so, couldn't, I couldn't, not in the time frame that they have, one day, two day, not possible. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. Yeah, and she, she, she's been with you and seen, seen like a lot of the steps and helps you with, with the forging process and stuff. And yes, she's course, finished handles for you, so she's, she's already... In, like seeing it she, first she knows hand, a lot, a lot of stuff, of it. and, so and was even even an the heat treatment and all that stuff. She's getting a hang of it slowly. If I do stuff here, yeah. she said, "Ah, is this is Weichglühen right now? Right? You have to program the the kiln on yeah. Weichglühen. Is it seven hundred forty or is it Apex on yeah. seven hundred? You know, she's asking uh, stuff in the meter, <laughs> but yeah, she gets a hang of it slowly. 
<laughs> so she'll take over the knives hey, and you'll be throwing let's pottery see. soon. Let's see. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> let's let's keep keep the name alive. That's one way. Ben, I have a question. Now that we are talking, Shoot it. when you when you harden your knife after it, how long do you need to grind the knife? That's always a question that Oli and me have. How, because mm. we are fucking slow after hardening. As we, when we are... It's going to save 15 no, that's, minutes. Yeah, that's that's where I save. Um, since I do no hand sanding and since the water-cooled grinder, I would say... You know, I grind everything in batches as well. So I go through 20 knives on 40 grit and then change everything. And so, But grinding the whole batch usually until finished grind takes me two to three days at 20 knives um but i will say i mean with hand sanding it would be I'm way more i sanding. would assume just and if you had one blade one blade and you go your progression how long would it take for beginning the grinding till finish finish grinding i would say including the belt changes i would say i could do it below an hour okay Good. Yeah. Yeah, with the batch setup, you're doing six knives a day. Then, if you finish them in three days, two to two to three days. But you, I mean, that's including the S hook. I'm doing a lot there after the fact. That's including, you know, in many batches, I have special knives like the monoliths. I have to handle them a little differently. Yeah. Things like that. So realistically, it's two to three days. But if I concentrate on one knife. Um, the rough grinding, for example, at 40 grit, that's done like in five minutes. Yeah, Something yeah, because like you, you, you forge then your I'm stuff. Then I'm down yeah. with the... F yeah, you, hmm? you forge your stuff very thin, so it's not a lot of... Mm, not only that, I mean, it would it could be three millimeters thick, like the stock I've got for the Florentine, Florentine yeah. collab. Um, the thing is just with the white belts at full speed, full pressure and i don't have to take it off for cooling i just stay on it and <laughs> press uh, sometimes my thumbs hurt okay, not from you. the heat but gotcha. from the pressure so uh th that saves a lot of time and 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 then as i said i mean i've i've hand sanded in the past nah. and i know how it is i know the people like i think martin one time wanted to convince me that he's only taking up 30 minutes hand sanding <laughs> And I think it's possible in an optimal scenario, but then you find a yeah. J-hook and then you revisit and then this and that. And I know hands it's, it's, it's crazy. just a fuck up. It's he, just... he told me, uh, I can knife in about four to five hours. Although I will say I was witness of that. He he delivered a perfectly uh, uh, for the Ukraine yeah. charity knives we did at Hangler Shop. He made a stainless steel clad knife with a, I think it was hidden tang, but spacers, nice handle, Thank nice you. finish. As I said, stainless clad in house, and he made it in a day, start to finish, flawless Crazy. finish. Um, so I've been witness where I was struggling. I was only making only, I say, making a monolith. Um, you know, ninety percent of the time you're forging, or ninety is, you know, but above fifty. Uh, and the rest is just grinding and then you're finished yeah. more or less some filing in between but i'm saying he he made that with a with a way more complicated construction in a day in a foreign shop so he, he is pretty quick if he wants to i think that's all the red bull <laughs> yeah one day in a case of red bull right? <laughs> crazy crazy yeah okay nice because that's yeah. how yeah, so on on day three, I'm, on day three, I'm still drawing my profile on a paper. <laughs> yeah, it's just always <laughs> the topic for for me and Ollie. I mean, how how long do you so, take uh, grinding? I would say, yeah. if I'm quick, one hour. If it's some crazy stuff when I'm dump and I take customs, for example, Apex or some crazy stainless stuff with S grinds. Then it's about over two hours. But it's, yeah, okay. it's, yeah, that's not too too bad. But, but it's I, I think it's it's just yeah. it's just sometimes I have the feeling that the belts won't cut in, for example, Apex with uh, S grinds. It just 
I start with a fresh belt in the S grind, and then I get the feeling, okay, that's not cutting anymore. I try to switch the belt to to turn it in the other direction. Then you can work with it a little bit longer, but in the end, I go through such 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 an amount of belts, and I get yeah, but that's yes, just and I get frustrated, and then I throw everything yeah. to the side and come back a few days later. I can't work on it till the end. It's not possible. Yeah, no, I mean, I get, I get that. I think being full time with it, you get frustrated yeah. as well, and then you try to find a solution instead of coming back. You try to find a solution to not get frustrated anymore. But that's just that's yeah. that's just apex. It has so much more wear on the belt than one twenty five yes, nineteen, yes. for example. Despite that already being a high carbon tungsten it's, alloy steel. Uh, it's so. crazy. <laughs> but no, in, in the, the thing that takes a lot of time with my work, I do the the bolt on construction. And I use my mill for the end caps and all that stuff. The 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 the, the holes in the right um, space and all that stuff that takes lots of time in my shop. I do. I don't yeah. know. I work on just the preparation of the handle to get them square, to get the holes in, to get everything aligned, so I can start making the handle. It takes me about two hours to get everything. Perfect. Mm. I'm slow. Yeah, I mean preparation. Preparation means a lot. I think sometimes the steps when you work that way are underestimated. Yeah, um, yeah I, I square off all my handle blanks as well. I insert the tubing. You know, preparation for the end caps is important as well. Getting those squared flat. Um, I think that's underestimated. If you just use, just under air quotes, use an, uh, a normal spacer um, made from Vulcan fiber or G10 or whatever, that's fairly flat to begin with and some just glue it up without even mm. using hidden pins and that's it. Um, in that context, that's that's easier for a similar looking result. Um <laughs> No, yeah, never without hidden pins I, uh, or alignment pins. It's just I dude, I wouldn't do it either. I I, I don't the, the the few times I used epoxy, I don't have had uh I didn't have had uh, didn't have had haven't had uh very uh right, good right. experiences with it. It doesn't hold up super well at all in my opinion. And no matter what <laughs> I did. There's two things. One um, is the epoxy. I always get anxiety when when i see that uh, huber is using that th those five minute epoxy it, it's <laughs> yeah. just driving me crazy that five minute shit yeah i can't do that epoxy, either um what is the english word after lots of months and years it will sh shrink it will get smaller within the size and it's not flexible yeah. it's not flexible oh yeah so if you do without hidden pin or alignment pins and you have that stuff, and one and your knife will fall one time down. If it's not glued perfect, you are screwed. And therefore, I started to use a different epoxy that's uh, a little bit flexible and takes a little bit longer time to cure. And no, huh? Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. But yeah, it works for Huber, so so I guess it's okay. But I did some tests, and and I had. The feeling for my old knives, where I used the five minute epoxy, and after two years, I watched and, and looked and said, "Hey, something is different." And on that time, when in the beginning, I had big gaps uh, on the sides of my uh, handle when, where the tang is going in; it was not flush, so you could look yeah. into it. And yeah. I know for for a fact the glue was completely full, even when it was hard. And like I said, after two years, you can see that yeah. the glue shrunk and got a, a good amount deeper. And like I said, it's not flexible. That's the biggest down. Because if it falls down, it's not flexible. It will break. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, fuck you anyways. But uh, I think you think similarly. But most yeah. knife makers don't. Um, glue... Yeah, that's just yeah. I don't know. You don't, you don't <laughs> use glue, right? How, how you much don't I dislike glue it when you do your uh, hmm? bolt on, right? 
No, okay. No, 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 no. It it holds up to um, the handle holds up with the with the middle nut. It's actually a nut. It looks like a screw, but it's a nut oh, yeah. uh, in the back. And the end caps, uh, the the screws you can see are really just alignment pins. I mean, they are they are holding the end caps on the Shit. on the handle. But what really forces the handle together is um, the nut on the back um, pulling it all together. I mean, the handle holds yes. up on its own as well. You couldn't take the the end caps off. You know, I grind the handle f- free, just uh, held by the screws. But the screws don't. The screws. The small right? screws there don't is, really is, uh, have. Uh, schraube. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's like a wood screw. It it goes small into the wood handle. Nice. Wood. Um, and they also they also keep the handle from twisting, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah totally. Last time, yeah. I think. So, so the front end yeah. cap keeps yeah. the handle from twisting because it has a slot, and the tubing within the the handle wood um, takes the okay. lateral okay. force. I think it is. Oh, you um, use a tube in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the when I first started, before I ever sold knives, um, back when I started kind of exploring that construction, I just put the tang in with the wood, and I never. I have some of those knives in my shop still. Um, I never experienced, you know, it becoming loose, but just the theory of the tang being, um, you know, of the wood of the tang pressing onto the wood inside it. Uh, it has to. Okay. come loose yeah. at some point i'm thinking and that's why i inserted the tube in into the wood so the tube what, what bears tube the do forces you use? of the tank the lateral forces oh, okay. it's a it's a breast tube like 0.5 millimeter wall thickness but that's actually that's actually ah. epoxied into ah. the wood now that i think about it but i mean we're talking about such a big surface area um i not i didn't always use and and it's drilled super precisely i have to pre- uh, press the uh press tube into the wood so back in the day i just used um some permaelastic um yeah. glue and uh one time I, I i didn't get the tube through so it stopped like two centimeters before the end of the handle block and i tried okay. to get it out it was impossible um i had to uh, you know throw the handle i'm just saying it 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 doesn't even need epoxy but i think even a bad epoxy would hold up that because it's it's kind of press fit already and then the epoxy has such a big surface area but i'm just using epoxy because i think it gives overall um more connection to the wood and then the brass tube can also stabilize the wood in a sense um if it's, for example, a cross-cut wood block or something like that, it, it gives a, more stability. Do you have a slot in a tube or just tang into the... No, no, it's... No, no, the, the, yeah. the brass tube is just round and uh, the tang is um, 4.5 millimeters times 8 millimeters square yeah, but rounded course, on yeah. top and bottom. And so the 4.5 millimeter wide rounded area sits on top and yeah, bottom of perfect. the tube, so to say. Yeah, I do. I do it myself can, on eight millimeters. That's yeah. what I would ask the next one: how uh, wide the angle, the 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 tang is. But yeah, I do eight millimeters too. I started in the beginning with ten millimeters, but yeah. I, I was forced to uh, to um, get a ten millimeter hole in it first in in the handle, and I was always afraid when I grind sometimes that I go into the the hollow parts. So I yeah. started to do the eight millimeter yeah. stuff. As as long as the tang is wide enough, I mean, I don't have the numbers on top of my head, but I did some calculations on yeah. shear force and tension force uh, of the steel, and we're that's talking. That's what I wanted tons. to tell. You. I mean, no way. That's I, going I, to break at that place. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's a kitchen no. Knife. And I've. In a chop and yeah, yeah. I, I've made a video once with a um, hardened yeah. tank just destruction testing, and I was able to break it, but only with a palm <laughs> kick, like Bas Rutten palm kick, um, f- uh, f- you know, <laughs> with the knife um, put into the vise yes. and from the side. So I kicked off the 4.5 millimeters hardened. Um, 
but up down the eight millimeters i wasn't no. able to punch off and and we're talking uh, Shh, uh, putting a vice and punching you know we're ta- not talking real... yeah yeah yeah, we're not talking leverage force yeah. like you would have uh, cutting yes. a watermelon or a pumpkin. Uh, that's yeah. way, way, way lower. Um, but I was was able to, you know, <laughs> give it a good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, but yeah, I still was happy. I mean, if it takes that much, I'm I'm happy if it fails then because if if you do that, I mean, <laughs> that's how you one. do it. Right. <laughs> yeah, like in the home kitchen, if that happens, oh, yeah. <laughs> we need a video of that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I have it on my that. Instagram. You high kick in one of your knives. Yeah, yeah. You do. I'm gonna have to go. go it's back it's way down. But if you search just for reels, I think you should be able to find it. I think that was back when I didn't um, use music in the background. I've I've talked about it so so often, but uh, I had to delete some um, reels because I used music in the background. And then I learned that yeah. <laughs> you can be oh, sued no. for that. So. But uh, the regular reels with the music from Instagram is okay, right? That's not okay. No, no, no. In, in... No, not always. No. Sometimes, sometimes it's okay. They let you choose it, and then no, no, they no even I don't know. It gets disqualified, no, 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 no. and then even they don't if show they let you choose it, um, Instagram provides you with the music, but you are obligated as a user to if you're a private person and don't have any profit f- from it so you know uh then you oh, can yeah. use it yeah. so if you walk your dog and use the music and make a reel of that that's totally fine but um if you're some kind if, if you're in mm-hmm. the business then then you can't use it and um that's that doesn't matter if instagram that's provides crazy. it um they are not liable for, for that. at the time i'm i'm shadow banned right now yeah i just looked yeah. at my me too i mine won't change because uh i got banned now okay. because <laughs> knife is in the name of my That's... instagram name so yeah i've had, I've had co-workers try to I find me on instagram new it doesn't show up when they search me people post stories or when it's a di- direct a link to anything if i'm in a story or in a picture but not you can't search me right now yeah no. uh, I, mean, I mean yeah. for you Instagram. it's a bigger thing for me what can I, I, say? I have my custom slots full and i can't do more it's not possible for me so right now i'm not even that bothered by it but for people like you mm. full-time maker it's it's just a nightmare I'm not too worried, to be honest, because I took the advice of a friend of mine who said, get independable of the social medias anyways yes. and make a website and get a newsletter. And that was the best advice I ever got. Um, because it really is that way. And, 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 and even if um, Instagram works, I mean, in theory, I have uh, 23K followers. The reality is I never reach them. Even when um, Instagram was, was cool, I got like yeah. 1000 likes and I don't know 5k views whereas with my newsletter the people who apply there or sign up, sign sign into that um they're you know not not just lurking they're potential buyers and I can go to them yeah. like quite definitely definitively sometimes my emails go into spam and there are problems with that as well of course but you know I can reach them actively, uh, whereas with any social media, that's never the case. So uh, even if you have your Instagram working right now or your TikTok or what have you, get a fucking website and a newsletter or just that's a right, newsletter. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a way better Sorry. thing. Yeah, <laughs> newsletter, but no, that's not. I'm, I'm so lazy. I have so many pictures of knives. I did. I'm just too lazy to work on them and post them. I have to get it going. I, if, 
you do, you you don't yeah. depend on it as a hobby maker either. So I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't go through the effort uh, if I was you. I think, but I'm saying for knife makers that are full time, yeah. I would I would highly recommend it. And I just sent you the video, and I just recognized oh. I didn't palm kick it off. I had the wrong memory. I used my two kilogram hammer. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I would have been able to palm kick it off. But it hurt. Uh, it was an unfinished hand handle. It was, you know, a pro uh, or a, a failed, a cracked handle. But unfinished and pretty edgy and coarse. And, yeah. It's but not I, going I, I nowhere. To the video. Yeah. You have to imagine what you have to do to to get on that point that you get so much leverage on the handle. It's just crazy. No, impossible. I mean, I've, 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 I calculated it. Well, how many knives? I think six hundred. I did uh, make in the five years, and um, no one ever um, complained about the. A yeah, I mean, tank. the hammer, two kilo hammers with that force. Yes, of course, it's going to do some damage. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, there, there's no way. Even if it was, yeah. Then you have sorry? it. You have it in a vice saw that forces, uh, like directed at yeah. one point in the tang. It's not yeah. over the whole. And you have to imagine thing. it's it's still it's still only four point five times eight um, millimeters uh, of surface area, um, and yeah, two kilogram hammers. The force concentrated on one spot. I mean, due to construction, that's not ideal, but. Um, if if you if you were to use ATCRV two and and hit just the tang on the upper side, it might be you know sp springy. It could it could compensate the energy a little bit, um, have more um, way or more uh, yeah more give, but with the handle attached, you know yeah. it's super sturdy and concentrates the force on a single spot. Um, yeah, no way to. <laughs> Yeah, guys. Um, I'll have to go to sleep. Oh, hi. What? Hi. You sleep? You sleep? Uh, I, I don't need to, but <laughs> I want to. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. We'll, we'll let you go to sleep, oh, then. No, no, I'm feeling old like lady, a, have a good a, night. an old lady. <laughs> Schönheitsschlaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you but are the I, one I, making I ceramics. Thanks for joining us. Today <laughs> is my home office day. Yeah, today, I said tomorrow is my home office day, and my home office day contains going into my shop and working on knives. So I'm I'm the regular <laughs> stuff. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us or me. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Same, one, thanks for the invitation. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> bye. All right. Good night.